Hi, I'd say good morning. It's morning here in the uh, snowy Pacific Northwest and I've been out shoveling snow. Now, one thing that happens with this colder weather is that the humidity goes up outside, temperature goes down, humidity goes up because the humidity is the relative amount of moisture that the air can hold at its particular temperature. So as the air gets colder, the less moisture it can actually hold. Now, that means that outside, it's 100% humidity because snow's falling. Or it could be rain. It's about that time, you know, temperature range. But inside, where we're heating the air up to about 67 degrees at the moment, that humidity is dropped like a rock. And that means that things are shrinking. Anything that's hygroscopic is giving up its water to the air and it's shrinking. And that means things are moving. Things shrink up when the humidity goes down. They also swell up when the humidity goes up. But in our indoor environments where most of us probably all of us have our instruments, especially really nice instruments that are made out of solid woods. Those woods can shrink and expand. They can crack. They can pop apart. I've seen it happen. Um, all because humidity change. Okay, so we want to talk about humidifiers. Now, there are two basic types of humidifiers. There's actually a third, but I'll tell you, I've used it in the past. I don't recommend it at all. And that's that's the kind with the roller that runs a sponge through the bath of water, usually filthy water. Um, it ends up being that way at any rate. And blows air through it. I mean, it works, kind of. It's not particularly effective, I don't think. But there's a lot of, a lot of those still available. No, we normally have two different kinds of humidifiers available. There's the cold water kind. Now, this gives you a fairly handy, you know, maybe a gallon bucket of, of water. And it gives you, you know, the base, which has the little pizza in, in, in here, pizza. And it vibrates like crazy. and shakes everything up and basically creates a cold, what we call a cold steam. There are a few issues I have with this. The main issue I've got is that anything that's in the water is now in the air. Not just the water, but any chlorine, any fluorine, any um, anything that's in the water is now in the air. And what that means um, is that after a few days, you're going to have a fine mist, uh, not mist, dust over everything in the room. Okay? That bothers me. Um, I don't like it in my workshop. I don't like it in my home. It's not something I, you know, prefer to have. So even though I've used many of these, and I have at least four of them sitting around, I don't really recommend this. Um, for that reason, I don't want to breathe that stuff and I don't want to have um, it all over you know, everything. So that's, that's type one, the cold mist. So the second type is what we call a warm mist. Now sometimes back in the day, if you're old enough, like me, um, before people cared about humidifiers and that's all you know dinosaur times we had these now they're selling these as humidifiers somewhat but really what they're called are vaporizers and the other kind is a, technically a vaporizer too but this heats everything up and it heats it up inside here there's two elements that are in here and it just passes a current through those elements. They're not connected, the water connects them. And it 
starts boiling the water. Uh, it helps to have salty water. So some of you folks on you know, the islands, um, you can have a great time with this because it really goes. The rest of us have to sometimes add some salt to these things to get them to really go. But they do go. And they use a little bit more power than the other type. So that's a disadvantage. But it also does add heat to the room as well as humidity. Now, these things do have some issues in and of themselves. Um, a lot of the stuff that's not going into the air, since it's really boiling the water, um, a lot of that stuff stays behind. And it stays behind either stuck onto the elements that are in here, or they kind of fluff out and go out through this hole. And this little piece in here, because it's really only heating what's inside the center, center can, really, I'll call it a can, um, it can get really dirty. You can get this crud built up on top of it. It depends on your water, right? You can run um, distilled water through this and you won't get that. Um, in essence, you are distilling the water in this thing. And what's distilled goes out into your air and adds humidity. And like I say, a little bit of heat as well. So it's not, you know, you're not using this technically to heat your house, but it does add a bit of that. Depending on, on where you live, how much moisture you've got in the air and, and how great the need is to get it up to whatever point you decide you want to have it at, you can be filling this thing up multiple times a day. And that's an issue for me. Uh, sometimes I, I leave for the weekend. I leave for a few days during the week. Um, what do you do? Well, what I've done is I've expanded the size of this. Okay. The bottom part is, is not particularly important other than the fact that it holds the water. And it holds it at a particular level. There's a, a notch here that shows you how high you're supposed to get it. It's about two inches below the top level here. You know, it's about there. So from here to here is where it, it wants the water. And probably that's to keep it away from, from the connections up in here. So if I can't be filling this up a couple times a day when I'm not here. And so I have a controller, humidity controller, that plugs into this thing and supplies power when the humidity level is low enough. And that's fine. That still doesn't mean that I can run away for a weekend. But if I do something that lets me put this in a bathtub or five gallon bucket, then I can leave for several days. And if I have multiples of these all connected to the controller, then that extend, extends my time frame even farther. So that is a positive thing. And, and how do you do that? Well. You can't just dunk this in a bathtub or five gallon, you know, you'll short it out. It's not safe. It's not something you want to do. So what do you do? Well, I've done about the simplest thing that is possible to do, and that's take some foam insulation and attach it to this so that it floats. And what I use is blueboard, right? foam. It's never going to get waterlogged and we've cut out enough of them, enough of it to go in here. Now it takes two of these, these are an inch thick, it takes two of these to make that two inches, right? So we go here and we've notched out 
everything we need to notch out to get it in there. And then we put the second one on. And now we have this that's going to ride two inches above the water in whatever 55 gallon drum or whatever you want to put it in. Make sure that there's enough of this available so it can go up and down. And now you've got a long term, you know, several days worth of water supply for this thing. That does mean you have to put a lot more water in it. And I tend not to fill it all the way up because this does spit water occasionally. And you don't want that all over your floor necessarily. Well, maybe you do. Maybe that's part of your scenario. But once this goes down below this level of the bucket, it's not going to spit beyond the bucket anymore. So that's my extremely simple solution to being able to leave the house, leave the shop for a few days, and not worry about the humidity going down far enough to cause damage. So then I can come back in and I can immediately get to work and not have to re-acclimatize the shop. So that would also, you know, apply to my guitar room. Um, the rest of the house, maybe there's a piano, a real piano that needs some humidity to keep the soundboard in good shape. Um, lots of lots of reasons to have that humidity in the air. There's a lot of dry respiratory problems people can have if there's not enough moisture in the air.